So I had gestational diabetes with all three of my pregnancies. And when I got pregnant with my first, I was terrified of needles. I was the type that would pass out at a blood draw. So getting the news that I had to now stick my fingers five times a day was horrible. But I've learned how to do it in a way that makes it less painful. And honestly, gotten to the point now that when I do it, I don't really even feel it. And it's not that big of a deal. And it's a great way to learn your body and how it processes food and which foods work for you and which foods don't. And by the time I got to my third pregnancy, I started testing as early as 12 weeks and never did the glucose test. We just used this throughout the whole pregnancy. And I felt like that helped me to manage it and stay on top of it better than waiting until we got to a certain point. So I'm gonna show you all how to use this monitor and how to test, where do you where to test on your finger to make it a little bit less painful. So this is just a monitor that I got at CVS. It was $10 without a prescription. It looks expensive. Yeah, it's, it's small, it fits right in your pocket. So you have the meter itself, you have your test strips here and the lancet. So the first thing that you wanna do to make this less painful is change your needle often. You want it to be sharp and, you know, for the pain, but also you want to keep it clean. On the list. What is often like every day, every other day, or? I I would probably like every other day is usually what I did just to kind of keep it nice and sharp. Um, And then on most of these lancets here, they have the numbers one through five, and this tells you how deep the needle is going to strike. Typically, when you first start testing, you're on like a one or a two. As your fingers build up some calluses, you might need to move it up. But I say start low and work your way up. Um, So this is the Lancet here. It has a new needle in it. I have an alcohol prep pad here. This is good for when you're on the go, but I found that it's much better to just wash your hands with soap and water. Sometimes this can give you a little bit of a false high reading. Mm -hmm. Um, So definitely wash your hands with soap and water because any food or any residue that's left on your hands can cause you to have a reading that's a little bit higher. So what you wanna do is you want to load a test strip into your meter. They look just like this, this little strip here. And you want to push it all the way in until it lights up and you'll see at the bottom that there's like a drop of blood or other meters will tell you, you know, it'll say add blood, but it'll give you a little symbol down here. You can see a little drop of blood. Then I'm going to sterilize. I find that it's much better to rotate your finger. So you don't want to do the same one every single time. And it hurts much, much less if you test on the side of your finger rather than right in the middle of the finger. You want, when you prick it, you want the blood to bubble right up. You don't want to have to squeeze it because the squeezing can get some particles or some residue in there and can give you a false high reading. So you go ahead, pull this back right on the side of the finger there. I should have gotten a manicure before I did this. And then you press the button and you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of blood there. Just give it a minute, it'll kind of pool up. You want to wipe away the first drop of blood. You always want to test on the second drop of blood. I should have used a dry wipe, but because it makes it a little runny. But if you use like a, a clean piece of cotton or gauze. And then you go ahead and you just add right here, kind of scoop up the blood to the test strip there. This one's $10, so it takes a while for the reading to come up. The more expensive ones tell you faster. But this tells me 125, and I ate just before I came, so it's not bad for probably less than an hour out of eating. Um, And I think we talk about fasting, which means at least eight hours Mm -hmm. of um, not having eaten. But whether it's one hour or two hour, sometimes it's hard to do it at two hour, right? Right. But if it's one hour, it's 140 or less. If it's two hours, it's 120 or less. Mm -hmm. So I tell my patients, again, patients I'm worried about because of high BMI um, or previous history, I may have her do this uh, as early as, you know, after the first trimester or even before then, just get into good habit and I often say, do it for two, three days without really changing your Mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. Let me see what the numbers are. Based on that, we can modify. Right. 
Right. And again, it's a really great way to learn your body. I learned, you know, sweet potatoes give me really high blood sugar. Um, but if I eat a regular white potato paired with some protein, it doesn't affect my blood sugar in the same way. Um, eating black bean pasta gives me really, really great blood sugar numbers because of the fiber. So you learn what works for your body, which is great in pregnancy, but then you can carry it on in postpartum and just for healthy blood sugar control for the rest of your life. 